with the clinical case scenario. A 37-week-old neonate was delivered to a mother by normal delivery. Her birth weight was 2.5 kgs and APGAR scores were 9 upon 10. As the mother developed postpartum hemorrhage, the mother and baby diet were shifted to a tertiary center which was 6 hours away. When the baby reached the tertiary center, the duty resident noted the following findings. Upon vitals, heart rate was 180 per minute, respiratory at 30 per minute, temperature 33.5 degrees Celsius, blood pressure 60 by 30 millimeters of mercury. General examination, the child had cold body, body as well as cold peripheries, poorly active with a poor cry. System examination was normal. Now, when we analyze this case, what are the findings that we have to keep in mind? Important is that, first, this child essentially was normal. She was born by normal delivery, her birth weight is normal, APGAR scores are normal. They were shifted in view of the maternal indication to a tertiary center 6 hours away. Now, in the meantime, when the child reached the tertiary center, there is significant elevation in heart rate. This heart rate up to 160 is normal in newborns. Above 200 is considered as pathological tachycardia. But heart rate above 180 should raise a warning sign towards increased heart rate. The respiratory rate is strangely low. You find normal respiratory rate between 40 and 50 in a newborn who is just delivered. Here the respiratory rate is 30 per minute. Something very slow and shallow is happening in the respiratory rate. Temperature, the child is cold with a body temperature of 33.5 degrees Celsius. Blood pressure is on the lower limit of normal. And child's peripheries are cold, body is cold, she is poorly active with a poor cry. So what is the diagnosis with all this? We have a term neonate who has had a normal transition from intrauterine to extrauterine life. Her APGAR scores also have been normal. But during transport, what has happened? She has developed abnormal vitals, cold body and cold peripheries during the 6 hours of transport. So what will our clinical diagnosis be? Our clinical diagnosis will be neonatal hypothermia which has developed during transport. That is the clinical diagnosis. But whenever we consider a diagnosis of neonatal hypothermia, we can never rule out sepsis. So sepsis should always be kept in mind whenever we receive a baby who is cold peripheries, cold body and poorly active. It's always a primary differential diagnosis. So with this introduction, let's see what is the temperature regulation in the newborn baby. In neonatal hypothermia, what is very important to know is the neutral thermal environment. The neutral thermal environment is a range of environmental temperatures in which an infant can maintain normal body temperature with minimal basal metabolic rate and oxygen consumption. Meaning, there are environmental temperatures like very cold temperatures wherein the baby has to generate great amount of heat by increasing his or her basal metabolic rate and increasing his or her oxygen consumption in order to keep the body temperature normal. That is not neutral thermal environment. Where the baby can maintain his or her body temperature with minimal effort with respect to BMR and oxygen consumption, that range is called the neutral thermal environment. So what is the definition of neonatal hypothermia? Inability of the newborn to adapt to the lower temperature of the surroundings resulting in a fall in body temperature to abnormally low levels is called neonatal hypothermia. Now this definition is important and in the new competency curriculum, neonatal hypothermia comes in a must know competency. So the definition is important. Coming to the physiology of temperature regulation in the newborn. In fetal life, temperature regulation is done by the maternal body and the maternal blood supply and there is no energy expended upon this by the fetus per se. Once the delivery is conducted, the newborn now moves from the intrauterine environment to the extrauterine environment and this extrauterine environment is definitely at a lower temperature than compared to the intrauterine environment. Hence the newborn now has to start functioning to maintain his or her own body temperature. Neonates do not have significant muscle mass. Hence, when they feel cold, they cannot shiver and with rigors and active muscle contraction produce heat and hence increase their body temperatures. So, what is the thermal regulation in the newborn? 
Temperature regulation hence has to be done through non-shivering mechanisms. This is what is the non-shivering thermogenesis which is very clearly described with respect to newborns. If you look at the intrauterine and extrauterine environment, it is very similar or akin to a child come playing in the swimming pool and coming outside. A child who plays in a warm swimming pool and comes outside, the temperature inside the pool is something like 30 degrees Celsius and the child comes out and walks into the AC of the 5 star hotel where the temperature is 18 degrees. Now that difference in temperature, the child's body will maintain by just a slight shiver. That shivering is caused by muscle contraction. So when we have muscle contraction, that produces heat and the child becomes warm again even in the 18 degrees lobby of the 5 star hotel. Whereas in the newborn, because they do not have muscle mass, they do not have a mechanisms to shiver and produce heat. Hence, this mechanism called the non-shivering thermogenesis. Newborns also come from an intrauterine liquor environment where the temperature is 37 degrees to an extrauterine environment where the temperature can be somewhere between 22 to 28 degrees, which is what most labor theatres are maintained at. So hence, the non-shivering thermogenesis mechanism is what comes into play there in newborns.